The widow of another child abuse victim in North Wales has told Channel 4 News her late husband was also shown a photo and given the name McAlpine by police. She hopes that a mistake over one identity will not hinder the fresh attempts to find other abusers and bring them to justice. Our reporter Kieran Jenkins is in Wrexham, North Wales tonight. Kieran. Thanks, Krishnan. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Mark Humphreys. First of all, uh, he was at the Bryn Estyn home here in Wrexham in the early 1970s. While he was a resident there, he was repeatedly sexually abused, and he took his own life in 1995. Now, his wife at the time, Wendy, has spoken out for the first time since this scandal came back into the headlines exclusively to Channel 4 News. And she claims that what happened to Stephen Meacham also happened to her husband, Mark. Statement at all to me? I've already made a statement. Steve Meacham admits he got it wrong. Lord McAlpine didn't abuse him. He's offered the former Conservative Party treasurer an unreserved apology. The confusion, he said, stemmed from a photograph he was told was of Lord McAlpine, shown to him, he claims, by police in the early 1990s. It's a story echoed by the widow of Mark Humphreys, another child abuse victim who was at Bryn Estyn in the 70s. She spoke exclusively to Channel 4 News, but asked not to appear on camera. Wendy claims... Mark was also shown a photograph by the police. Steve Meacham has said Lord McAlpine wasn't the man who abused him, and I accept that. So who was it? We mustn't forget this abuse happened. Lord McAlpine says the claims were wholly false and seriously defamatory. Mark Humphreys' widow wants to know whether the victims were misled. That was the name Mark believed up until he died. It begs the question when police showed them the photograph years ago, why was Lord McAlpine's name put to this photograph? Who was responsible for giving the boys that name? Keith Gregory was also abused while he was at the home. And he too recalls police showing him a photograph of a particular alleged abuser. I mean, and you ain't given a choice of photographs. You have one photograph. Is this your abuser? Um, yes or no? In my case, no, definitely no. We asked North Wales police to respond to the allegations in this report, but they refused to comment. That's because all issues around the original police investigations into child abuse here in North Wales are now themselves the subject of an inquiry led by the director of the National Crime Agency. And that inquiry will also revisit, if necessary, any historic abuse allegations of child abuse here in North Wales. Now, Wendy, Mark Humphreys' widow, believes there's very much unfinished business here. And even 30 years on, she's asking anyone with any information to come forward and go to the police. Kieran Jenkins. Well, after weeks under fire for not broadcasting a report about Jimmy Savile, today the BBC Director General George Entwistle apologised for a Newsnight report it did broadcast. Mr Entwistle said the piece which wrongly led to the former Conservative Party Treasurer Lord McAlpine being linked to child abuse should never have been aired. He also admitted he'd been unaware of the report beforehand, but said he wouldn't be resigning over the issue, as Carl Dinan reports. There are cameras at George Entwistle's door again. He is investigating Newsnight again. You have nothing to say to anyone apart from the BBC, sir. And no, he was only going on the BBC to apologise again. Newsnight made a report that was uh, largely reliant on a, a witness who went on camera, who, who now admits, went on television yesterday to admit, that he made an, ina an inaccurate identification of a key figure. Now, that means that what happened on... what we put out on Newsnight was wrong. Lord McAlpine was named on the internet after Newsnight had said a senior Conservative was involved in child abuse. Newsnight hadn't named Lord McAlpine, but hadn't put the allegation to him either. <laughs> Yesterday, it became clear they were wrong. A new crisis for Newsnight. Tonight, this programme apologises. A key allegation in a report about child abuse was wrong. That allegation had come from Steve Meacham, an abuse survivor. He said that having finally seen a photograph of Lord McAlpine, he realised he was not the man who had abused him. The allegation had been taken up in the atmosphere following the revelations about Jimmy Savile. Revelations which Newsnight had investigated, but chosen not to broadcast. 
Well, look, it's hard to avoid drifting to the conclusion that, that the broadcast of the Misham allegations was an attempt by Newsnight to rehabilitate itself. Remember, they'd sat on allegations about Savile. They'd, they'd failed to broadcast something which it now appears was probably true. And they've now, in reaction to that, or that's how it appears, broadcast something which is transparently not true. So the question is, what happened to Newsnight's journalistic standards in the second case? What indeed? Well, there may have been pressure to run the story after a Twitter message earlier that day revealed its existence. And after Savile, Newsnight might not have wanted to have been seen to be dropping another child abuse story. But none of that means normal controls should have been overridden. Now, George Entwistle says the lawyers were involved. So what about the editors? Well, Deputy Editor Liz Gibbons was running Newsnight because editor Peter Rippon had stood aside over Savile. But the two levels above, Stephen Mitchell and Helen Bowden, had also removed themselves from decisions on child abuse stories. Director of Radio 5, Adrian Van Claveren, was the temporary senior executive, and he signed off on the story. But responsibility for that new structure lies with the Director General, George Entwistle. Well, clearly, there is something fundamentally wrong with the BBC's management structure. This has represented a failure of management at every level, and that goes up to, and it includes, the Director General. And so George Entwistle will be called back to the Culture Committee soon. They'd already told him to get a grip over Savile, and now he'll have to explain why he did not know about the Newsnight story until the following day. A report on what went wrong at Newsnight is due on his desk tomorrow. Well, we did ask for an interview with the BBC Director General, George Entwistle, but he only did interviews on the BBC. Earlier, I spoke to Sean Griffiths. She was the local council official in Wrexham, who we interviewed on this programme on Thursday, who was closely involved in two of the investigations into the child abuse scandals in North Wales. I asked her how she felt about the last 24 hours of media hysteria. Well, I hope it hasn't had that much of an impact, really, because... You know, if Stephen, you know, has come forward and said that he has made an honest mistake um, in relation to identifying um, somebody who, who abused him, when you look at everything else that's come over over the last week, there are other individuals who've come forward through all different sorts of avenues, including the Children's Commissioner for Wales, with allegations that, you know, that are de you know people are saying are new allegations, then. Personally, I think I think the inquiry just you know the two inquiries that David Cameron or Theresa May have set up, they just need to carry on and, and just start the work that they've been um, been asked to do. People are now talking about Stephen Meesham as an unreliable witness, as if you can't believe anything he says. But what would you say about Stephen Meesham as a as a witness and as a victim of abuse? This doesn't just apply to Stephen. I think that anybody who has has been abused. I don't think any of us can possibly imagine what that actually does to somebody. I, I, I just think at the end of the day, you know, there will be issues about um, their memory. It's not about the fact that they're, they're not telling the truth. It's not about um, them making stories up. It's about the fact that it's not always going to be a totally accurate picture. What you've told us is that when a police officer attempted to tell the inquiry about a particular individual who happened in this case to be a high-profile political figure, he was stopped from giving yeah. any more evidence about that. Is it also the case that the name that was read out to Waterhouse uh, was not looked into further in the course of the inquiry? As soon as that name was uttered, everything stopped. I, it was stopped, but... no. I work for the local authority and we weren't a party to any decision making that the tribunal made. I don't know whether the tribunal behind the scenes re-looked at that, at that person's name. I mean, the, the other thing is, until we actually get a copy of the transcripts that Peter Ackley, of Peter Ackley's evidence, I'm not 100% sure what that name is because I've, it's, you're talking nearly 16 years ago. I really think that all the reporters, all the press, they need to, to gain access to the transcripts of the tribunal and then they can actually see what names were named and how the evidence was given and any cross-examination that went after that. 
Sean Griffiths, the former local council official in Wrexham.